Okay, welcome back. I hope everyone had a chance to grab something quick to eat. Um, I'm really excited to introduce Galen. Uh, we, I think we did the math back in June when we were doing our Safe Fruits of School Board ceremony. And we've been working with Mass Bike for over 10 years, at least 10 years, right, Galen? And Galen can maybe let everyone know how he started with Mass Bike, but it's just so great. I love to see the evolution of it. So um, I am really pleased to have Galen present our new bike friendly driver piece. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Diane. Um, and thanks to your whole team for all the work that we do together. And yeah, it does go back um, to the days when I was a part time instructor at Mass Bike, as one of my part time um, bike gigs. Um, I've only been at this role about three years, but literally a decade ago, I was an instructor. And um, kind of a side note, I was going through some old files as we were moving offices uh, the other month, and I came across a, um, a reimbursement sheet for MBTA passes that I remember going down and taking commuter rail to um, Safe Routes to Schools classes on the South Coast. Um, and uh, just, it's so fun to be at this role where now we can be very much full circle. I really appreciate being an instructor goes back to my roots, but I also being um, in this role, we're able to devise some of the curriculum and expand the program. So uh, Diane and her team have been really instrumental in uh, how we scale out and scale up because we have a big state with a lot of need. And I'm really appreciative to be a part of this summit. And there's so much work going on. So um, I'll make it brief, but I have a quick presentation about one of the expansions that we've been actually been pursuing this year. Um, about being a bike friendly driver. So this is great. Um, it's, the, the short of it is that we created a new asset. It's a, a one pager, um, front and back, a lovely PDF that I'll dive into some of the specifics of, but it's geared towards drivers. When typically safer to school has been geared towards people who are walking and biking to school, obviously, and working with the administration um, and the project teams to kind of create safe routes and safe education. But one of the deficiencies, I should say, is how we were actually reaching the drivers who were getting out there, at least from Mass Bike's perspective. I'm also very grateful to be following Emily with Safe Roads Alliance because I think this dovetails really perfectly around the messaging that can come from students and be up-leveled up to the guardians and the folks at home who are also driving. And so what we were able to do with the Safe Roads team, and I'll tell you the story of how this came about in a minute, but we were able to boil down the messaging about how to think about sharing the road from a multimodal perspective, especially those who are arguably um, responsible for driving the, the vehicles that have the highest propensity for injuries and danger out there, the, the cars. So what we've done is a backpack flyer campaign. Um, next slide, please. On ways to share the road with bicyclists. So the story of this, I like to say from idea to implementation, um, I'll give full credit to Jen Martin from Newton, who came up with this idea and through the Safe Routes Network, through the Safe Routes partnership that the uh, city of Newton and her whole Safe Routes team was able to do, was to create the asset. So the, the whole story, not to get into it too much, is that we participate at Mass Bike in the National Bike Summit hosted by the League of American Bicyclists. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the League of American Bicyclists, also known as the Bike League, is the nationwide nonprofit that focuses on federal and statewide legislation, policies, funding mechanism, et cetera. Whereas Mass Bike, we focus on the statewide level. Um, and then we have that filter down to all the municipal levels too. So this is a great story about all of the levels from federal to state to local, all working um, jointly to create something that is going to impact the individual. So the Bike League came out last two years, I think, with a bike-friendly driver program. They launched it in Fort Collins, Colorado. It's a you know PowerPoint presentation followed up by a quiz to help train the tips about how to drive safely around people on bikes. So uh, Jen attended the bike summit that happens every March. And I fully encourage all of you to attend to whatever capacity you're allowed to join us at the bike summit and Mass Bike runs this. So pay attention to our messaging and we're gonna invite people. Um, but Jen learned about this bike friendly driver program. She said, do we have this in Massachusetts? And basically the answer was, well, no, 
Not yet. It's a really good idea. So let's see what we can do to create this. So working with Mass Bike and working with the Safe Routes to Schools coordinator, we basically up-leveled this app to those at, M at MassDOT and incorporated it into this year's work plan to build out a bike-friendly driver program. And what it turned out to be was, this is a start, this is the first year we're doing it. Uh, we created this, this pamphlet, which I'll go into in a moment. And the idea is to put it in the backpacks of students, take it home, just following up on uh, what Emily was just describing on how we can get from the student to the driver, knowing the student themselves is not the driver, but what matters most is the student's safety. And that's gonna be what triggers safer driving. Next slide, please. And full credit to Jen for, for being such a champion here. And I know that she's on this as well, so props to you, thumbs up. Um, so what this flyer does, it essentially it reinforces the principles of traffic. Um, and along with the principles come the laws. So this is where uh, MassBike, the team at Safe Routes to Schools and those at MassDOT, we really put some concerted effort into how can we boil down some really complex and hard uh, you know, legal principles and you know, hardened fast laws that we can make it digestible and approachable in a way that drivers are gonna see this happen um, from, a, from a, a flyer and then have that actually influence how uh, drivers are affected. So a lot of it is the separation between a little bit of the laws, such as um, you know, opening a car door on somebody who's biking past is actually a law. Um, parking in a bike lane, uh, that's illegal. Using your cell phone in your hands um, while driving, that's illegal, we know this. Uh, but along with other things like stopping at stoplights, um, and typically our messaging at Mass Bike is geared towards cyclists. So this was a change of philosophy. How can we now basically put the filter on that we can send this messaging to drivers. And a lot of it came down to, I like my favorite is number two, it's drive with respect. How can we actually humanize what's going on out there? Um, and uh, we'll, we'll share this PDF as well, so you can kind of boil down. I won't dive too much into it, but just to get a snapshot here. Next slide, please. The, the big, lens that we wanted to view this from is that we are all people. It's not a bike and a car. Um, even the term pedestrian is a barrier for having people identify with the fact that they're just walking. They're a person who's on foot. So what can we do to actually change some of the language that's being used? And this has been reinforced. Um, Rachel brought this up earlier. Vivian brought this up earlier. Judy brought this up earlier. How is the messaging affecting maybe consciously or subconsciously, how we're all approaching how we share the road. So a lot of what we were able to do in the various drafts going back and forth, it was tough. We had to actually take these complex um, topics and make them as brief and as, uh, you know, if you're only gonna look at this for 15 seconds, what, what's the takeaway? So all the takeaways were the humanizing aspect of it. So we did little syntax changes, such as when the word bicyclist came up, we had to change that to person on bike. Um, and it's not a car, it's a person driving a car. Now it is, since this is in nine languages, it is a little more complex than I'm giving you credit for. Um, how do we actually make the phrase person on bike? And how do we actually make it flow so that if somebody's gonna see this briefly, that it actually hits. Um, so it wasn't every time that we're gonna use the phrase person on bike that does get a little tongue tied after a bit. So we do use bicyclist. And sometimes we're actually referring to the bike itself the object, so we are keeping the word bike. But I, I do wanna say that we started really hard looking at that framework so that we are just bringing in a human nature and these are choices that are made out there by a person and that's what we're trying to influence. It's the same mentality that the Vision Zero Coalition pushes with changing the word accident to the word crash. It's those subtle tips that remind us that, oh, these are decisions that can be made by a person and that uh, person is gonna be influenced by this flyer. And again, this is to that last bullet point here, having that knowledge work its way up has also been the goal. Next slide, please. So let's boil it down a little bit. Um, and I know that Rachel, thanks for popping the PDF into the chat, but um, one other of uh, the challenges we are facing are the complexities of bike lanes. And this has been something that MassBike tackles on a statewide level, which is tough because 
there is not yet the standardization of having all types of bike lanes in every single municipality and every single school district. So we had to assume that a lot of uh, what we're showing here is not necessarily familiar to those who are either biking who are walking or who are driving because they're just not down yet. Now, full credit to MassDOT, they're doing the best they can to get the municipalities to up-level some of their infrastructure. Complete Streets is a wonderful program that actually embodies or empowers municipalities with funding, policies, and training to know what these uh, infrastructure changes are, including Safe Routes to Schools changes as well. But a lot of what we're having to do here is also think about, okay, some of these drivers are coming at this from a, a, a grounding perspective, the lowest of bars to say, all right, so what is even the very basics of a share row? all the way up to a protected bike lane. And again, this was a shift change from mass bike. And, and I'm really grateful to be able to have the, uh, the, the mindset of how do we uplevel this to drivers? Because usually we're speaking to cyclists um, or training people who are riding bikes, but really the challenge is how do we actually send this to drivers who are really unfamiliar with some of this stuff. Um, and a lot of the challenges also come with a little bit of the inequity of some of where these infrastructure pieces are actually being laid. Because there are many communities in the Commonwealth, even in developed uh, complete streets policies and vision zero cities like Boston, Cambridge, and Somerville, some certain neighborhoods and some certain school districts might not have this infrastructure yet. So that was another challenge that we were facing. And I think we did a pretty good job. Um, we couldn't hit every piece of infrastructure. So we picked the ones that were probably one, the most common, or the most confusing or the most impactful for what's happening around a school district. Um, and some of these have yet to come, like bike signals are very, we'll call them rare, but also I should say that they're coming soon. Uh, but this is a snapshot of that. Next slide, please. Cool. And a lot of this is also of reminding drivers of the rights and responsibilities that people on bikes have. At the same time, we're trying to encourage and remind people who are biking of those same rights. Now, this is a, a very condensed version of basically our Mass Bike Laws page, which we track our stats on our website. If you go to massbike.org slash laws, it's by far and away the most visited page on our website, which is great because we want people to be educated and informed out there. But we all know that there's deficiencies in how drivers understand how the laws work. So we wanted to remind drivers that, hey, it's okay. It's okay to share the lane. Um, it's okay to use the full lane if you're riding a bike. It's okay for a bicyclist to pass vehicles on the right, especially at a red light. But we also wanted to remind um, bicyclists that it's, it's a negotiation out there. And this is one of the phrases I like to use the most, that all traffic is a negotiation. So what are we gonna be doing to really message to all modes and um, this is a, the bullet pointed list. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but I like to say that this is uh, year one of this implementation of a bike friendly driver program. And this might also be scaled out. Uh, we're viewing this with our safe routes to schools lens, but can we also view this from an RMV lens, which Mass Bike works pretty intensely with? Um, can we view this from a driver's training lens? But uh, how, from this perspective, are we going to get elementary and middle schoolers the asset to then bring home? Um, and also to remind you know, students that are out there, this is the, the tough conversation that we have when we do the in-person instruction of at what age group is it appropriate to start encouraging bicyclists, people who are riding bikes, kids who are riding bikes, to think about riding in the streets when they might only at this point be riding in their neighborhoods, be riding on sidewalks, be riding on bike paths, so I always like to say, when you are ready, when you are older, when you feel more comfortable, this is some of the perspective that you have to have as a person riding a bike. And one of my other favorite things I like to do when I teach is in a big group, I'll have uh, you know, elementary schoolers say, all right, who here has your driver's license? Raise your hand. You know, we're talking to 10 year olds. And then I'll follow it up with who here has your bicycle license? Raise your hand. And there's always the jokesters out there who still raise their hands and like, all right, come on. Um, but it's the reminder that to get a driver's license, you have to know some of these laws and principles of traffic, but that's not necessarily held the same in riding a bike out there. So how are we actually gonna 
message to bicyclists, to kids who are riding bikes, that there are very distinct laws of rights and responsibilities that you have to keep in mind. And then just to keep messaging that in every way that we can. We message it at the bike rodeos, we message it at the presentations, and here we can message it with a flyer geared towards drivers. Um, next slide, please. So what's next? Um, I know this is very brief, and thanks for uh, affording me the ability to speak to everybody on your lunch break. Um, so where are we gonna go with it? I do believe that with Mass Bike statewide purview, it's our responsibility to make not just think that we're covering all our bases with this flyer. So working with Safe Routes as our base, we wanna springboard this. We wanna take this into the RMV. Um, and we have worked with the RMV. There is um, updates that the RMV manual does twice a year. Um, and that's essentially kind of one spot where we can have a big impact. And that's all new drivers, anybody who's taking the test, but we know that there are gaps in that. If you've already gotten your license, you aren't necessarily reviewing the manual twice a year to see what the changes are. So how can we kind of uh, find ways of focusing um, to, to make sure we can make a big impact? And maybe that's in the driving schools, maybe that's through other mandates of getting education out there and other means. Um, another way is to work with lots of points of smaller impact. So if we can reach every municipality um, or every driving school or every school district, it is a large body of work that needs to be done to get there. But we know that that's gonna have real impact. So we're kind of focusing on two, two sides here, top down and bottom up. We're gonna be working on continuously updating this. As I mentioned, this is the first year of this program. Um, and thanks to Jen for, for noticing how we can bring this from a federal perspective here. But the idea of what is gonna be the continued conversation. Um, and I also like to think that as laws get updated, as policies change, and also as the culture and community around how we share and negotiate evolves and changes, this is going to be regularly updated and part of the conversation. And I think this is a first step to say, at least from Mass Bikes perspective, we need to think beyond just a person riding a bike and educating the kid riding a bike out there. How can we also get that messaging upscaled to reach those who are driving and to get that uh, kind of that cross pollination of understanding. And I think I really appreciate being able to follow Emily here because I think that mentality is perfect. How can kids start to speak up? So if a, 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 a student is riding their bike to school, we think it's gonna change the mentality of how their folks at home drive, knowing that there are students riding bikes in their neighborhood. And then, you know, thinking of, even beyond the touch point of a student driving, a student riding a bike and their person at home, their parent or guardian driving, what can we do to kind of continue the conversation about being a bike friendly driver and messaging that? We know statistically, arguably, who rides a bike out there, the stats are, are pretty weak in terms of getting reliable data, but we know that on a good day, even the city of Cambridge is around a 9% mode share in terms of who rides regularly. 9%. And we know that there's about 40 to 50% of drivers who are still passing through out there. There's a far higher number of drivers who need to be messaged. Some of the stuff that bicyclists know intuitively because we live it and we experience it. And not for nothing, I drive a lot. Um, I work statewide. I have to drive a lot. Um, so for those who are thinking this is a multimodal conversation, that's where we want to take this. Sometimes you can choose to be a biker. Sometimes you can choose to be a person bike, uh, walking. Sometimes you can choose to take transit. Sometimes you can choose to drive. We want to make sure that this messaging is not narrowed into one silo or one fiefdom of a mode, but really is cross-pollinating because, again, we're negotiating a shared street out there. And then to think about how that hits through multiple um, years during a person's driving lifespan, I like to say. Uh, when they start to drive uh, as a teenager, we want this messaging to be front and center because they've had the Safe Routes training because maybe Mass Bike or a Safe Routes coordinator has been in their schools for several years. We want that messaging when they move on um, and start to have families of their own, start to think about uh, students that they're gonna be responsible for. And then when they start to age, can we have an age-friendly uh, driver that has a biking component as well? And just kind of expanding the scope and scale of where we can have multiple touch points. And I think that might be it for us, Diane. I think I have one more slide of just contact. Yes. Um, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with Mass Bike, uh, we've been around since 1977. 
Um, we do work statewide and I'm always available. Um, so please check in with us. And um, again, we do a lot of work with the Safe Roots program statewide and I'm grateful to be here. And thanks for having an awesome summit. Thank you, Galen. I do wanna put in a big, uh, some props to Galen and his team. Um, that his him as an instructor and his instructors he works with are fantastic. We send them out all over the state. We highly encourage you to work with your outreach coordinator to schedule um, a bike safety assembly at any uh, bike rodeos, even virtual, especially in the winter, maybe when we can't get out there in, in person. Uh, Galen and his team did an exceptional job of developing some online uh, uh, curriculum, I guess we'll call our online education for the students. So please definitely uh, book those with us. So thank you so much, Galen. Awesome. Okay. My, my pleasure, Diane. I'm here to take any questions too. I know we got a little oh, extra yep. time. 